a lot of science is based on assumptions that have no evidence in their favour. In my most recent book, The Science Delusion, I describe ten of these assumptions, which most scientists take for granted. They don't realise they're hypotheses. They have, uh, they're just assumed to be true. And these lead science into complicated um, tissues of speculation. I'll take first the assumption the laws of nature are fixed. This is something built into the foundations of science, partly because of the platonic influence on the founding fathers of modern science, who thought the laws of nature were ideas in the mind of a mathematical god and therefore fixed eternally, um, and now just built into the general platonic assumption that most physicists and, and, theoret and mathematicians have, that there's a kind of platonic mathematical realm beyond space and time. So the assumption is the laws of nature as we know them and the constants were all fixed at the moment of the Big Bang. Then they have to explain why were they fixed the way they are so that we exist and so forth. And there's two main theories. Either some intelligent designer fine-tuned them to get them exactly right, but since that might involve something like God re-entering the picture, the more popular alternative is that we live in a multiverse with countless universes that actually exist of which we only can know the one that's suitable for us. And this is one of the tissues of speculation. But what if the laws of nature aren't fixed? What if they're not uh, in an evolutionary universe totally fixed forever? What if the laws evolve? After all, law is an anthropocentric metaphor. Only humans have laws. And it's one of the ways in which we project our human concerns onto the universe. In the 18th, 17th century, it made sense. God was a kind of emperor. Um, so um, if the universe is radically evolutionary, which it seems to be, why shouldn't the laws evolve? Because human laws evolve. Or better, a better metaphor in my view, is, is that they may be more like habits. If they like habits, there could be a memory in nature, they don't all have to be fixed at the beginning. So this whole debate about why are they exactly right becomes a non-debate. The whole of this vast tissue of speculation, <coughs> evidence-free speculation, can just be dissolved away by actually asking the question, are the laws more like habits? You can do experimental tests to see if there's a memory in nature. Um, so that's one assumption that hasn't been tested but is taken usually for granted. Another is that, um, that, that uh, nature is purposeless. This is simply follows from the machine metaphor on which science was based in the 17th century. Machines have no purpose, therefore the universe has no purpose, evolution has no purpose. The second point I want to make in my remaining 90 seconds is um, that um, evidence, uh, the facts don't speak for themselves. Um, you can have evidence that's plain for all to see, and if it doesn't fit someone's theory, they'll deny it. In the 18th century, when peasants saw stones fall from the sky, meteorites, and described them to the Academy of Sciences, uh, they simply said it's impossible, these must have just been ordinary stones that were struck by lightning, which is why they were hot. Uh, it was impossible because there are no stones in the sky. Um, they simply denied the evidence. And the other way in which evidence is distorted is by selective publication. Drug companies are now known to publish selectively the results that favour their drugs and not publish the ones that don't. Then evidence-based medicine, which looks so impressive on the surface, peer-reviewed journals, review all the evidence, then these drugs turn out to be very good, it's based on highly selective publication of evidence. This is now endemic in science, uh, the so-called replicability crisis, which has recently, in the last two or three years, cropped up. Something in some studies, up to 90% of papers in the biomedical sciences and about 50% in psychology turn out not to be replicable. Why? Largely because people just publish their best results and don't publish the others, uh, because it's important to get ahead in science by um, um, uh, publishing good results. Then we come to the problems that my colleagues here will be talking about uh, the, in physics where concepts like dark matter, multiverses, um, are, are put forward and are widely believed as theories uh, but which have left behind uh, normal scientific criteria of evidence.